I'm going to go back into the project directory and I'm going to create a Docker file here. We're going to use a Python 3.7 base image. Um, we're going to run it on Alpine 3.9. Then we're just going to run some um, basic uh, APK commands here to make sure that we have the latest packages installed. Um, so we'll add bash, build base, um, we'll add python3 dev, libffi dev, we're going to specify the working directory as just app, and then copy everything um, from our uh, host machine here into the container, um, well, everything from this uh, project directory. And then we're going to just run uh, pip install dash r requirements.txt. Then we'll run pip install in the current directory. So this is actually going to make use of that setup.py file that we created to install, um, to install the package itself. Um, we can see why we would want to do that here in a second. Then all I'm going to do is uh, chmod the uh, a run file that we need to create here um, to make it executable. And then I'm going to specify the entry point here um, as that run file. Okay, so let's make that run file. It's just going to be a simple shell script that we can use to start the application. Uh, user bin python here at the top, or sorry, user bin env bash python uh, u just means unbuffered and we're going to run simple chat server.py so we want the docker container to contain our chat server and then we can use our test client or um, any number of other different clients to connect to the server okay so the next thing that i'm going to do is just do a quick um, bit of extraction. We have this settings file and I want to make use of um, or I want to reduce sorry okay so we have this settings file as well I want to I want to go into uh, the client for instance and notice that we have some uh, magic numbers here um, and magic strings we have this local host and this port what I'd like to do is to extract these into um, variables that we can use and that we can share between um, between modules in our application. So I'm just going to call this server host and I'm going to call this one server port. Okay. And then in settings I'm going to just specify them here. So now I just need to make sure that those are imported. Oops, and it was the client that we were working in first here. In any case, what I'm going to do is say from simple chat dot settings import server port server host. So we can um, actually access this simple chat, um, the very module that we're working on, by um, installing it locally here in editable format. So what I'm going to do is um, back at the console, I'll get rid of uh, I'll get rid of this window, and we'll go back here. Go ahead and shut down everything. I'm going to go back to the root of our directory where our setup script is, and I'm going to pip install editable this directory. So now I have simple chat installed. And I'm going to use the same uh, the same sort of idea in our server as well. So we're going to get rid of our magic string here. Server host, server port. Okay, so let's make sure that that's working. We'll 
we'll go back into the simple chat module and run um, run the server. Okay, so that's working. The chat server is running. And likewise, our client is still running. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to finish setting up Docker by actually creating a Docker compose file. Um, and we are, we're only going to be running one module for now. I think in a follow-up video, I may look at how to connect a Postgres database to our uh, chat server so that we can actually persist those messages. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and create um, a Docker compose uh, here just for the single service that we've created. So in the root directory of our project, I'm going to go ahead and make a docker compose.yaml file. We'll be using version 3. And so in the docker compose file, we just specify a list of uh, services that we'll be running. And so let's call ours chat server. Um, the build we'll be using, we need to specify the context. Uh, the context in this case is just this, uh, this current directory. This is where the Docker file actually lives for our chat server. We can specify some other things here, like if we wanted to actually um, uh, maybe have an uh, env file for environment variables. Um, I think that's fine for now. There's some other options we could have here, like if we want to restart on crash, always, um, which again, we may not want to do. Uh, basically, this is like about as simple as it gets uh, for a Docker Compose file for a custom context. If we were running Postgres here, for instance, um, then we may want to specify like a particular volume uh, for the chat data that we'd have. Um, that way we could persist that data even if the if uh, the Postgres service went down. In any case, let's see if this works. We can test it by doing docker compose up. Okay, so what it's doing now is it's installing um, Alpine Linux in a container for us. And then hopefully if we've uh, set up the docker file correctly, it should run our um, chat server. Oops, and we got to step five of eight where it says we couldn't open requirements file, no such file or directory, requirements.txt. And so I, I realized that in our Docker file here, I have a step where we're actually installing requirements.txt. Our app doesn't really have any requirements, um, outside requirements other than um, when we installed itself. And so what I'm going to do is just remove that step and we'll Docker Compose up. If we add dependencies to our project with pip like PyTest or something like that, um, then we'll need to also install those. Although PyTest, I, I suppose, wouldn't be running in a Docker container. Okay, so we can see now that the chat server is running. Um, so one thing that I believe I forgot to add to the Docker Compose, though, is we need to map ports uh, from the Docker container back to our host machine if we're going to run a client uh, from the host. So what I'm going to do is just control C and stop, uh, stop the chat server in Docker. Um, we can actually force it. Um, and we can Docker Compose down. And dash V removes uh, volumes, which we haven't created anyway. So I'm going to go back into the Docker Compose file. So in our chat server service, what I'm going to do is create a ports key. And then we need to map a port from our host to a port on our container. So I'm just going to check that really quickly. If we go back to our settings file, yeah, so our server will be running on 4443. And I'm going to replace the local host or loopback address here with um, with 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, which just says listen on all um, all open network interfaces on the host. All right, so 
what I should be able to do now is I'll clear the screen here and we'll Docker Compose up. Actually, we can Docker Compose build first just to make sure it builds. And yeah, we see that we have an invalid type here. There's just a typo in the Docker Compose. Uh, looks like I forgot to put a hyphen here. Okay, that should work. Little Docker Compose build. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through that Docker file and execute all the commands that we have uh, specified as part of our build for this container. So you can see that it successfully built and we should be able to Docker Compose up now. So once that finishes, we can see that our chat server is running, log message is still getting logged, um, but we're running in the context of a Docker container now. So you can see that Docker Compose is actually just going to prefix everything that's getting logged out to the console here with the name of the service and then an underscore one because it's the first instance of the service that we have running. So I'm going to use tmux to create a new pane here. And we'll source uh, env bin activate. And I'll start a new client here on the host machine. So this isn't running in Docker. This is actually just going to be running from the shell here. And so I'll run python client.py. And so you can see we're now connected as a client um, from this session in my, in my in a tmux pane here to the actual server, the chat server, which is running in Docker. So hello from client. And you can see that the server is broadcasting the messages um, back to the client here. Okay, so that's it for a, a pretty basic chat application. Obviously all of the messages that are coming through here are ephemeral, so we're not um, actually explicitly persisting them uh, through any backend. That might be a kind of a, a fun thing to hook up in a future video. Be sure to let me know below if you have any comments or questions as you build this out. Um, and be sure to like and subscribe if this, uh, if this video helped you out. All right, thanks.